Hey everybody, I recently released a song called Simply Magical, um, and this is just a little video breakdown on how it was made. So first things first, I'm gonna play an arrangement for you that this song actually started off as. Okay, so if that didn't sound at all familiar, it's because it shouldn't, because that's not, not actually what the song starts off sounding like. So I took this arrangement that I have, and I sampled it to get this. See, if I actually take one of these little chops and I extend it out like this, so you can hear it in its entirety, It's the same exact thing. All I did was chop it up to get this. So I basically started writing a song, realized that that song in itself would make a better chop sample, and then chopped that sample, and then started building a new song based off of that sample that makes sense right so i took that and i sped it up about five six beats per minute and i got this So immediately after having that sample-based intro, I break down into a, a chord progression that is actually new, it's fresh. I'm actually playing it on my MX-61. Um, these are the chords that I'm playing. Then I have a, a bass line that's also my MX-61. Combining that with the, uh, with the chords. Typically I like to go a little bit more wild when I'm making like dance music, um, especially if it's like disco inspired, but while I was making the song, I actually started listening to some old disco records, and the chord progressions in those songs, and just the chord work in general, isn't really that complicated. Like, a, there's a lot of flourishes that come in and out for sure, like strings and things like that. But as far as, like, the actual piano and the bass guitar, it's really simple stuff. And so I decided to kind of take a step back and have a more, like, simple approach for this, uh, this time around. So let's talk about the vocals really quick, because I did do vocals on, on these verses. Um, so they are multi-layered, but what are those different layers? So the first three layers are just me singing normally, right? Like, and layering over myself. Grab my shoes and grab my coat. Like those are being performed in the exact same octave. There's not really any harmony happening here. Like if you listen to them one on one. Grab my shoes and grab my shoes and grab my shoes. The only difference is that they've been leveled differently and I have them panned a little bit. So you get this kind of like stereo surround sound effect. Grab my shoes and grab my coat. Now, the interesting thing about the final two layers of vocals is they're actually vocoded. So there's a vocoder attached to the micro cork, and I recorded my vocals through that. So you kind of have this like robot effect. Grab my shoes and grab my coat. Now, the, the robot voice or the vocoder voice isn't really enunciating that well, but a lot of the enunciation of the vocals is carried by my actual like singing voice. Grab my shoes and grab my coat. And so the having the vocoder there just kind of adds this nice extra little like texture layer to the vocals. Grab my shoes and grab my coat. I'm going dancing. So the next thing we're adding to this arrangement is just little like decorations, right? You know, like little sonic candy because we already have the, the solid foundation of the piano and we have the bass guitar. But since this is very inspired by disco music, you know, you might have a little guitar in there, but, but something really light, something pretty simple. You can kind of hear that I have some delay put on them, you know, to kind of make them last a little bit more, give them more space. And I also, since this is very much inspired by like that disco sound, I have these kind of cheesy but retro um, 
orchestral stabs. And that's just like those like typical, simple, kind of goofy disco strings. It's actually a patch built into my Yamaha MX-61. So the next section of the song I want to talk about is the hook. But I can't really talk about the hook without talking about the transition into it, right? Like the hook doesn't actually start where the verse ends. And I'll show you kind of what I mean. This right here is the end of the verse. And this is the beginning of the hook. But if you'll notice, there's this whole like empty space in between here. So what exactly is happening here? It's just a transitionary spot. A lot of people will call it a post verse or a pre-chorus. But what's happening in here? Right, we just have that empty space and those drums, but what else can I use to kind of build the anticipation, build the energy towards the hook? I use strings, which is kind of like a typical, again, disco thing to do, like if we're talking about just kind of like the low hanging fruit of making disco music. So this is the string arrangement that I landed on for that little transitionary period. So we have that going in to the hook. Again, very simple and open chords on the piano, just like in the verses, you know. Super simple. Um, even the notes on the bass that follow it are really, really simple. Not a lot happening there. But if you listen really closely, not only are the piano chords being voice led, but the melody for the hook is actually hidden in that piano chord progression. Let's listen again. And then you listen to my vocals and it's the same thing. Feels like I'm sinking, feels like I'm swimming too. And so the notes were already kind of there for me, you know? I just had to put some lyrics to them. And that's basically the hook. It just kind of repeats that loop, right? Into the going into the second hook, it's exactly the same. The only things that change are the lyrics and that I add one extra layer to um, the piano. So instead of just having the piano by itself, I have an electric piano over the top of it playing the same exact chords. Again, a pretty retro sound, um, but I thought it fit really well in this song. For the bridge, we go all the way back to that sample that we chopped up for the very beginning of the song. It comes back. For the very end, we have a looping of the hook while I add a few layers. So what are some layers that I add? The first layer I add is some extra harmonies that actually weren't in the, the hooks before this. So in the hooks before this, the vocals were more or less just this. Feels like I'm sinking, feels like I'm swimming too. For the final hook, we add these harmonies. Feels like I'm sinking, feels like I'm swimming too. So you combine all of those. Feels like I'm sinking, feels like I'm swimming too. We add some horns, but not just like real simple stabs. We have horns that play the chords that our piano is playing. And that's really it. They're just there to kind of accent what the piano is hitting, right? So there's hardly any room for anything else to fit in, but I've managed to fit one extra piece in, which is the synth solo. The synth solo is kind of more or less just kind of playing a loop of a few different notes. I didn't want it to be too busy because there's already so much happening. So it's kind of just repeating the same thing over and over with a little bit of articulation and variations here and there. Like 
I talked about what I did for the verse, I talked about what I did for the hook, I talked about what I did for the bridge, and I talked about what I did for the outro, but some of you may have noticed I didn't talk about the second verse. And that's because I didn't do the vocals in the second verse. So in order to talk about what actually happens in the second verse, I'm gonna bring on the person who did the bulk of the work. Okay, um, I'm here with Fuch, uh, who is the feature on, on this track. What's up? I am Fuch. <laughs> I have gone by several AKAs. When we met, I was going by the master of space and time. Now I'm just <laughs> so wild. Now I'm just Aura's dad. Um, I make music. Um, I make a lot of content and such right now, doing a lot for families. Um, but yeah, happy to be here. Happy to be on a project. Yeah, yeah. So it's so nice to have you. Um, for anybody watching this that doesn't know, we we have worked before. I, I had like a thing called Speed Dream a while ago. We we made a song on it. We had a Swerve and Protect, which was so fun. So fun. Yeah. And I and even before that, I known you at least a year prior to that. Like uh, we met. I mean, I, it was my first show in New York. I yep. at the. I know. I mean, this was a while ago. It was called. I, I. It was either called like bakery or cake or like cake shop or cake store or something. Do you remember the, that the venue? Sounds about right. It might have been <laughs> cake shop. Cake shop sounds right. Did you? Is it? Does it even exist anymore? I have no clue. I'm pretty sure that area. It was just Lower East Side, like Houston area, which is a popping little area. Oh. But, um, I don't know. I feel like stuff changes there so much. So probably not. Word. Yeah. I like was so excited to be in New York and I like played in this like basement, basically this basement venue yeah. and and you were there and it was so cool because like obviously visiting New York was like really intimidating um, because it's just such a big city and there's so much stuff happening. But you were like the only local act really that I had seen there at that point you were like my introduction to New York City it was like you and at uh, Tokyo Megaplex at the time okay. and I just remember it being so wild because I was like oh if this is like what like I felt I basically felt like I was in a bubble of like little like SoundCloud musicians and then I was I was having to see like real musicians and like real artists and I was like oh crap I'm gonna have to like get more serious if like this is what I'm gonna have to be playing with from now on <laughs> Was this 2016? It was. Or was this, or was this 2015? It was. Either I think it was 15. It was like late 15, like October right. or something. So I had only been there. I'd only been here for since the summer of that year. No way. Yeah. So Tokyo. How are you already so active? <laughs> the second I landed, I hit up Tokyo. I was like, "Hey, you know, I'm in New York. I see you're in Brooklyn." He's like, "I have a show tonight," and that's how it's been going <laughs> for me ever since. <laughs> No this way, city that's has just wild. Been moving. So, like, as soon as I landed, I started performing. So, I was just on a wave, and then, like, Smoothie Tunes was a wave. So, the yeah. fact that I got to meet you then, it was like, what? I've been listening <laughs> to you for, for a minute now. That's so dope. It was so cool. It was so cool. And I just remember, like, from the moment I saw you perform, I wanted to work with you because there is a difference. Like, oh, wow. For, I think a lot of people have this assumption that music is kind of like this monolithic thing where it's like writing. Um, recording, producing, mixing, performing is all like one skill, but it's not. And there's so many people that are like good on the MP3, right? Like you hear somebody Very rapping true. on a track and you're like, oh, that's real sick. And then yeah. live, it's hard. It's a different skill it set. Is. Yeah, and no, that's facts. And I hadn't heard your recordings. I was hearing you for the first time live and I was like, this is so impactful compared to like a lot of rappers that I do hear, like on SoundCloud going wow. into like the live thing. And I was like, I need to work with this person. I need to work with this person. And oh, I, man. <laughs> I also think that from a producer's, you know, path, like coming from me, you remix a lot of hip hop tracks and like just pop songs because you want to know what it would feel like for somebody's like sick voice to be on your beats it's like yeah my beats are inferior and i'll never get a chance to work with this person but if i remix their tracks it's kind of like a trick in my head or we've collaborated but you for know, you relatable as somebody who's like who's rapping because like every like for me as a kid you know everybody i feel like i don't even think it's necessarily just a black thing but it's like I thought I could rap, you know, at like like 10, 11 years old and like me and all my friends like sitting outside of like a, a Dollar Tree, like spitting these goofy, stupid verses that we just kind of like got over. Where is the path between like that and what you are now? Because clearly you're like wow. very proficient as a lyricist and a rapper. So like, wow. how did that happen? Okay, so 
it started with poetry and i think there's a lot of mcs i meet oh. who we had a poet path and that kind of explains why we are who we are it's like we started with the words we started with like and then eventually okay. it transitioned into like one day we heard a beat and was like i am going to convert this poetry into hip-hop and like that was the path of just wow. like it already kind of rhymes and then you just learn how to fit it within bars at that point but i started writing poetry in middle school i think it was sixth or seventh grade it was definitely seventh grade for girls i had crushes on like i was too <laughs> scared to talk to them but i would just write the dopest poetry of just like the most wow. romantic stuff and then would never show it eventually like when i got to high school i would be like i wrote this poem for you like i was <laughs> that guy yeah <laughs> like coming up it was just it was just poetry and then eventually like that next year some kids were sitting around freestyling and i was like wow. i have enough words up here i think i can i think i can jump in like hopscotch and That's i did wild. and they're like yo you you're kind of dope like you need, to, <laughs> you need to keep this up and i just kept it up from there that's wild to me though because it's like i did poetry too in high school and it wasn't but it wasn't dope and also like, <laughs> it came from a really dark place and okay, i just don't, okay. and the, i also think that when you're when it comes to write, like i'm glad you even brought up poetry because when it comes to like rapping there is a lot of from like an amateur rapper there's like a lot of filler right where sometimes you're just looking for words to rhyme to fill up space right when you're writing poetry that's not necessarily the approach like exactly not just like you don't have a word count for poetry like everything you say has to matter like it has a point right. and so like you saying you have that path into hip-hop makes a lot of sense because your verses are very like substantial there isn't a lot of like throwaway lines or just like oh he's got to put this in here to like finish the rhyme or complete that that like four bar and it yeah that makes sense that it comes from poetry and like the art form has changed so much so you have people back in the day like jay and wayne who were some of the first you heard that literally went in the studio with everything in their head or could listen to the beat and have everything in their head and then yeah. just rap and not write it but <laughs> it's because they wrote so much they got the pattern down where they could fit more lines in their head before they had to like like um, they just had higher memory so they they could right. do that but now it's like you kind of are doing that same skill what i've seen a lot of rappers do and it is more freestyle like you play the beat i'm just on a track and i'm getting high and like pause it and then pause okay <laughs> then i'm gonna say and then i'm done, and then i'm coming up then to the top so it's like it's less substance but it's for quicker turnaround so yeah. that's kind of the wave now so it's i Word. won't say it's it's a dying art but it's not you don't have to spend that much time on your lyrics like you literally don't have to it doesn't have to be that efforted it's true yeah but the effort is apparent like it's not right yeah like people don't not notice when it's like okay a lot went into this into this verse yeah. or, and so i feel that but you so you're saying you had just moved to new york when i'm at so where did you move from nashville tennessee that's where i spent the oh bulk of what my the life. <laughs> yeah that's wild that's wild for a lot of different it's wild okay. because i didn't know that like there's a lot of this conversation <laughs> that i'm going to be hearing for the first time because I, yeah. mean, I just never asked and also because so many people go to nashville for music that like Isn't the idea it? of somebody yeah. leaving nashville is so yeah. interesting yeah so it was i grew up in nashville i grew up in church i knew all the session players and musicians that were touring Wow. So it was like, I'm not that good at an instrument. I played saxophone for a while. I was pretty good. Just never practiced. I know how to play a little keys, a little bass. But I saw people going on wow. tour with everybody. It was like, that was the thing. You played around, you shared with a bunch of musicians. All of a sudden, somebody's like, hey, we need a keyboardist for this tour. And before you know it, you're like playing with Chris Brown. Like, that's how everybody's <laughs> story was. So it was either wow. that or it was like the songwriting route of really going to studios, being in writing rooms. And that freaked me out of like having to share ideas with people just like, what about this line? And then we go to the and like doing that. I was like, I don't want to co-write. I don't know if I want to do this right now. So I still I, can't do that. That's wild. It's hard. It's I've gotten better at it, but that was the route. It was either like get dope at these like notes 
or co-write with people and like get credits and maybe become an artist like figure out the publishing route and i didn't really see either happening for me so i considered new york or la and i went to la first oh you were here i went for a week just for a week i mean just to visit and get the vibe and i could not figure it out omni i could (laughs) not figure it out i was staying by the airport (laughs) And I had friends there and they were like, you by the airport? Oh, that's pretty far. <laughs> I'm like, oh, what? I'm only here for a few days. I'm like, well, maybe we can meet up at this time. Traffic's so bad. I was like, what? <laughs> no, that is the most like relatable and very true. Like a lot of people that come to LA, they're just like, I don't, I can't figure out what the heck the like vibe even is. It's not even that I don't like the vibe. It's just like, I don't even know what it is or where it is or who it is but nobody seems to be on the same page and i totally get that i couldn't catch the wave i was like there's so much (laughs) happening here i don't know how or where so then when i went to new york i visited and it was it was cold it was in the middle of the winter i was like okay maybe not but as soon as i got (laughs) here i got an interview i got a show so much started popping immediately Word. I thought, okay, I can figure out how to move and shake in this city. It, it just felt like a ladder. Like if I dig, I get my community, keep going. And sure enough, started hitting up open mics, um, just going to different performances. People I knew from SoundCloud. There was enough people in like East Coast. So like Boston, yeah. New York, whatever, that enough people came here. It was like every week somebody else from SoundCloud was having a show or something here. I was like, yo, you know, yep, you know me? Absolutely. Yeah, what's up? What's up? <laughs> I'm glad you actually brought that up because I wanted to talk about that really badly because there is this like people have tried to put different like words on it or labels or like collective um ideas i just call it soundcloud people because there was this sense of like a lot of people that didn't sound anything alike that were like super cool with each other and the fact that when i went to that basement show you were like there with like tokyo megaplex like maxo was like remixing your music and i was just like from the outside i was just like oh all these people are just homies i guess like i guess it's just like that in new york where everybody's just friends and plays shows together all the time it was just the vibe it was just the wave it was the synergy and there was another show you did in brooklyn a couple years after that with maxo do you remember yeah, that yeah at uh, that was cool too. right that was cool too yeah the, it was just like where else you know does that happen there's only select cities where where that kind of thing would be happening at. so true because like we were just so in different lanes but like yeah. the fact that it, we were able to like uh, I don't know, like uh, coalesce all on each other like that. And everybody was like vibing with each other's music. And we were like collaborating and stuff. It was just such yeah. a cool environment. But that's interesting. I'm glad that you at least gave like you were really trying. Like, I think that this will be important for a lot of people to hear, because I think most people would, I don't know, maybe read some negative tweets about a city and be like, ah, it's too hard. Or they look at look up rent prices and be like, I can't do yeah. it. But like you went to L.A. first and tried and you were just like, okay, maybe this isn't for me. And you didn't go home and was just like, well, I guess that's it. You like went somewhere else and like things worked out like that's so important for people to like internalize um, as creatives. Definitely. That's that's the journey. You just have to figure out what works for you. But like you said, leaving Nashville, Nashville was the it city. Yeah. the year i moved 2015 there was some big lessons like the number one city in the united states to move to <laughs> nashville tennessee and everybody i talked to in new york was like you left nashville to come here absolutely like, yes <laughs> and then that was when like nashville hot chicken got big so i remember oh. uh kfc when i moved to new york there was a big kfc poster just like now nashville hot chicken <laughs> Nashville was calling you home. It was my city is on. My city (laughs) is on and I'm out. I left. That's so funny. Even now, people in L.A. will leave L.A. to go to Nashville. I mean, it is a very specific sound of a musician that will move to Nashville. But they're just like, I got to go out there. Like, that's where it is for me. And it is nice to at least have options. You know, like some countries have like one music city, you know, and right. it's like, that's right. where everybody goes. Like, we're really fortunate that we kind of have like there's a pop and whole thing in like Chicago, like Nashville's got their thing, like New York has yeah. their thing. It's really, really nice. But like you from that path, like going from Nashville, you know, you're like writing poetry and you're you're rapping, you move up to New York, like things are like popping and everything up there. Like I obviously living on the complete opposite coast have had such a small window into your creative process. 
And I think a lot of producers do this thing. I'm going to describe a thing. You're going to be very aware of it, but I'm describing okay. it to people that are watching okay. this. Where like a producer loves what you do. Basically what you do is magic. You know, there's like this fool just like spits gold onto tracks and that's great. I can make tracks and I love to have gold. So they just go to you and they're like, hey, can you do this? But they have no idea the like the process or like how much work yeah. it takes. And then when you put the thing on their track, they're just like, oh, cool, great. I got what I needed and they'll leave. And for me, that's always been the process of like working with somebody who has a skill I don't understand. Like somebody's mastering my track, somebody's okay. like rapping on my track. Yeah. But there has to be like, for all of the stresses that I have as a producer or like for a piano player, I can only imagine what the same stresses are for a rapper, especially for somebody that's rapping on a lot of other people's music. Cause you do have a lot of collaborations. Yes. So for me, I have become or am attempting to just be this vocal harmonic wizard in the way I attack a song at all. So how many tracks did I send you? It was like, there's oh a God. bare minimum 20 tracks. Like most yeah. times for a small verse, I just am layering, verse. yeah, I am oh layering everything as much as I can. For me, that's the most fun part. So what excited me the most when you sent me this track, you got the chords, you know, you've always got the chords, you got Thank the you. vibe. <laughs> when I heard it, I was like, yes, because I immediately just started like singing, riffing and noodling. And then you told me the concept. So it's more about I just I know I can bring the lyrics, but I wanted to fit just like a puzzle melodically and rhythmically. And I want to enhance whatever chords you have laid down. I want to find harmonies in there that embellish them and bring them out. So for me, that's the whole process is just obsessing over exactly where to put this stack. Like on cloud nine, 10, 11. Yeah. On cloud nine, 10, 11, left my body going to heaven. Yeah, I'm so high. I would just try stuff be like, oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. And I heard it. It was it. like, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's that like harmonic the most all of a fun. Yeah, that's that's exactly my process now. I feel like that's how it's changed. So when I first started rapping, it was just try to write 16 bar verses that was the thing and that would be hard i would get to bar eight and be like i don't know what else to say what else should i say now it's like i'm yeah. pretty sure i can figure out what to say if we have the topic i'm used to that now it's just i i want to be known for that harmonic lay as an mc as a rapper singer whatever so i'm always trying something new trying a new you know voice inflection that i haven't done before that's kind of the most fun part to me these days it's so apparent in your music and i'm glad that i um like get to work with it in any way like even when i got to remix uh, catch me cruising Ooh. it was it's just really nice to work around and with your voice because thank you it isn't simply rapping, you know, there's so much like, there's like this thing where anytime somebody's messing around with music, especially if it's black people, it sucks. I'm not trying to make it about black people, but it's like, you know, when you can like hear church and people when like, yes, it's almost absolutely. like a spice that comes out of them. There's, I'm like listening to you yeah. rap and I'm like, there's, there's chords happening within verses. I'm so high. Like <laughs> harmony and rhythm. I'm like, this is so much fun to work with. Yes. versus just somebody who's like putting like a monotone but you know sub substantial but still like a monotone thing on there you're like right singing as you rap a lot and the thing is i don't really like my voice single i don't like oh. it i just when i wish i could like i've tried rapping it when i compare my older stuff i'm always like something's missing the 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 timbre of my voice i never felt like it was enough just as a consistent whatever so when i hear other rappers i'm like that i wish i could do that but mine uh, sounds better when i layer it i love it when it's layered so i'm kind of just leaning into my strengths more and there was an engineer i worked with back in the day like maybe 2012 2011 and he was really cool my homie joe like we would just be at his house recording on pro tools and he would go try to sing it <laughs> and i was like sing oh. it. and he was like yeah go dun, 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 like instead of just rap it and that changed my life like that wow. once i realized i could bring the verse to the next level by just trying to find the note of what i'm saying 
it it just took my sound and that's what i've based everything off of since then so shout out to joe he had a very <laughs> cute this dude was just like try this try to sing it and as soon as i did it just it made a world of difference that's so cool i like how there's like usually those nuggets you know that you collect yeah. along your path that are like that change your creative process completely you know yeah. and how you approach things i know that when um i'm producing tracks specifically when i'm going to be working with you there is a sense of leaving space for you to exist like i mean from our beginnings just kind of how you talk about like in the beginning you were just doing like these single layers now when i approach somebody to collaborate i to some degree tailor the song for them right i'm like i can hear what their voice does or can do and i try to have a like them shaped hole in the track and you as a vocalist as a lyricist take up a lot of space in the track which is really really great and i know there's some people that like if i gave them a track as sparse as the track that i would give you it would still sound hollow but i know that you have like so much lateral space that you can take up in a track and i feel like that's unique to you as a as a vocalist versus some other people that i've worked with in the past i love that first off yes producer yes that is the, <laughs> that's the producer mentality right there that's how you know you're the truth so i appreciate that first off and you know i have done a lot of songs where there wasn't space and there was a lot of clashing and that was a yeah. whole lot because it's like i want to give it something lyrical but i kind of like it sometimes because i like jazz so i grew up listening to a lot of jazz with my dad so there's sometimes you know a lot of different counter melodies and rhythms and stuff that may happen during a solo improvisation or whatever that i like hearing sometimes but yeah i, I appreciate when there's space when i can take off and i can kind of fly so kudos to you that's that's <laughs> awesome that i was thought of in even in the inception of, of the track yeah absolutely um absolutely and so when you're going um about approaching this song there's a few things that i de definitely want to talk about because there are things okay. that not a lot of people do and i also want to make perfectly clear for anybody listening to this me praising future for doing these specific things aren't saying everybody who doesn't do these things sucks it's just like maybe consider doing this because these are things that like as somebody who's grown a lot in their in their creative path is like on TV and like Grammy nominated. Maybe you could use oh, wow. like one of these things from like Future's oh, wow. Toolbox and like <laughs> maybe it'll help you a little bit. But the first thing you do on the track is you like announce your presence in the verse, which is like so huge. And I feel like people don't think about that. like. People don't think about that a lot. Like producers will have their little like sample that they play their producer tag or whatever. Yeah. Um, somebody like, you know, Pitbull, like shouting like Mr. Worldwide, like 305 yeah. or whatever. It's goofy yeah. or something. But like announcing yourself on a track is so important as a vocalist, right? Like it's important. It's important to have that. And like before you say anything, you have this like sick, like just sound that you make that it's just like oh, Omni is gone. Future has arrived for the next few bars you are going to be hosted by a completely different vocalist wow that's such a good attention to detail right there that's that's great it is <laughs> crucial it's something that i've loved that a lot of the mcs and stuff did you know Ludacris was one of my favorites back in the day oh, every time yeah. he was on a feature he'd be like luda like right before you <laughs> went in on this verse it's like oh luda ain't nobody fucking with me when Little features come up. <laughs> so it's like you expect that you tend to expect something when you got a dope feature on the track also i always have lead-ins when i'm recording so it kind of started with me just recording like uh yeah like clearing out my throat getting my voice ready yeah and then people started telling me like no engineers would be like i'm gonna leave that uh in like as as soon as it goes to that verse like that uh, so good uh, yeah like that's my <laughs> other one doing the yeah a lot but yeah for this one specifically it was a straight up mj to ooh, like ooh, i was like i was like because i was in the booth just like oh just it's dancing so good bobbing. it's like it needs it needs a little drop just that little cherry on top right there but thank you man yeah no i think that's so important and i think that a lot of people like i mean we can talk uh, I mean, we could have a whole like eight hour conversation about music and like the music industry and like how, you know, to grow, how to progress, how to get noticed or whatever. But I think that it's 
and poor taste and and i think it's ill-advised to look over the small details right like you are the only person i've worked with that's grammy nominated and it's like it's wow. not like a russian roulette right it's not like a game wow. of craps or a gamble it's like okay so why wow. is that what is this person doing on their music that is putting them here and putting somebody else not there yet right like it's not it's it can't be ignored like what is going into these verses what is going into these tracks and like the clarity the layering the the harmony that you're putting in it the announcement on the track it's like i could take just that verse that you put on this track and this would be like a master class portrait and like how to make a like vocal commission or how to do a verse on somebody else's song i'm straight up humbled man i'm, I'm absolutely <laughs> humbled just like wow i always appreciate this just looking at the journey because I know, and you know as well, just every step it took for you to get to where you are and right. every skill that you've learned to be able to put out a project like you're putting out now, just even the business side, even the promotion, even the yeah. everything that you've learned along the way. It's like it takes every bit of there's this skill set. And I think it's just you learn from everything like it, you have to pick up and glean knowledge from like not even just failures but like things that other people do that you like you just make a mental note even if it sits in the back of your head oh that was cool how they did that and you don't know how you're going to use it or how it's going to come up that's <laughs> right. kind of the wave it's it's the wave is you have to constantly be not even adapting just kind of taking on uh information of how people do stuff and i feel like it affects us in ways we don't even think about so when, when we look back the fact that you pointed out that specific thing it's like yeah that's one of those things along the journey i kind of picked up kept doing it worked i kind of perfected it a little bit but super humble super super humble yeah it's so it's so cool and so like now just for like a couple of like more technical um uh, I guess questions because there are people that are going to look at this that are vocalists that are rappers are producers okay like what is your literal physical approach like I've sent you the song what are you yes. doing do you have like a pen and paper are you going directly in and like doing scratch vocals like what is the process like yeah so I'm on my phone notes now I remember transitioning okay. from paper to notes I, uh, I hated it <laughs> When I was, was like, this? Not, when did you do the, tra the, the I transition? I don't remember. It was more than five years ago at this point. But I remember it okay. was, I did not want to. I just did. I was like, you type what? Because I would be in the booth with people and and they would have their phones. Yeah. And I would just cringe like, nah, it's the art form. You got. <laughs> and then eventually I had an idea and I just didn't have any paper with me. And after that, I never looked back. So definitely okay. to my phone notes. One thing I don't like about my phone is like, with paper i could fit an entire bar on one line now it's like usually a bar on a phone it's oh. like it's gonna cut so it's interesting like, aesthetically it just doesn't like i wish it was like bar one bar two bar but it's yeah. not it's just gonna be like a little paragraph kind of in that way and i can like <laughs> indent it when i need to wear but definitely on my phone and just on repeat and i am on the couch at one point i'm in the kitchen making a snack the thing about songs that I really like, so your song is a perfect example of this. You sent me this feature at night. I'm pretty sure it was like maybe yeah. 10 o'clock my oh, time. Oh yeah, maybe. this is this was like yeah. one of those get to me tomorrow type of scent. Like Right. And yeah. I'm listening to it. I was doing something. I start listening to it. I'm me like, yes. Like I just <laughs> get up on repeat. And once you told me the concept, I just started jotting down lyrical ideas so okay i'm going from high to low the feeling of that emotional rush to the come down so i start thinking of metaphors oh that might be a good metaphor i'll just type it in the document okay this might wow. be a dope line and then i'll think of something melodically on cloud nine okay cloud nine is dope cloud nine what if i count down up count up cloud nine 10 11 left my body going to heaven oh like i'm just getting hyped <laughs> now because now you got that cloud you got heaven you got that whole metaphor so i'm just yeah. now playing with like how can i form this into an idea and then i get my what you call it i get logic open and then i kind of go by how it sounds because one thing that is always different for me is going from how it sounds about 
in my head to on the microphone there's always that bit of difference because uh, i hear it in my head i'm like oh this is gonna sound just like this and the second i turn it on hear it i'm like nope that what is, is that not... i hate that by the way what is because i've done that. that so many times you're just like oh I, i'm you're so hype on an idea yeah. you record and you're like oh that ain't yeah it. <laughs> that ain't it so <laughs> then it's it's trying to adapt it to something that sounds cooler or just as cool to what i heard in my head and that's usually where the bulk of time is spent and sometimes words don't hit in the track the same way they hit just without music so like wow. I, i'll hit a line i'm like i need to change that the to uh uh i don't know something else it's like you lose it in the snare you oh lose it God. in the something and i'm like no 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 i'm gonna switch that the order of that sentence so it rides a little bit smoother so it rides just a little bit That's smoother so wild. so then it's just like taking and fine tuning and then after that it's just embellishing it with melody so i listen to what i recorded over and over and over again until literally the melodies like appear like the chords i'm like almost as like the track will my head will just hear what a line could be so i'm like yeah. i'm listening i'm like oh what if i went above that with something and then i record it no okay no that didn't work didn't work didn't work try wow. something else so i'm just doctoring it and trying to get it to a place that is just so pleasing to my ears that I just want to repeat it. And once it's done, Omni, I will play that for three hours on a loop, <laughs> like just spinning in this chair, like, ah, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Cause that feeling of completion of getting it to that place that is my ear is just like, it, everything's gelling in that way. That's my favorite part of music. And then once I send it to you, it's like, I don't like the track anymore until it comes out. And then I need people to tell me they oh, like it. Oh, please talk about it. Talk <laughs> about that. That is the thing. That is the very, yes. like so many times, like people have looked at me wild because even on stream, I'll like open up yeah. a track that I'm hype on. I'm just like, and I add yeah. nothing to it. I'm just yeah. like, this is so sick. And then the second I release it, I'm like, I don't want to hear it. Don't talk to me about it. Like, I don't even know who that man is who made that song anymore. <laughs> yeah. 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 I need that validation of it being the best thing you've ever heard in that moment. If you give me that, I'm like, okay, I did feel like that once. Okay. Exactly. Cause you've Thank already you. gone through that. You went right. through that. Right. I've already, I need you to, otherwise I'm on to the next. That's my uh, old stuff. <laughs> that's so important. That's so important. Cause I think that some people, even artists will like feel bad that like, if they're too hype on their own stuff, like while they're making it, they're just like, wow, I've like listened to this same song like you know like a hundred times this week and it's like yeah man you're supposed to like you made yeah. it like that's incredible you should be proud of that and then after you release it and people are hearing it for the first time and they're hype and they're just like man why isn't this full hype on it and it's like bro he heard it 500 times 500 times. he's already trying yeah. to make the he's already listening to the next song you know for the yeah. 200th time like you gotta yeah. like help him on that one <laughs> yeah, and i will a say that's something that hurts me about other artists is we move on from our music so fast so fast. and i'm a i'm a i try in any way i can to re-push something i try to get over it i'm like if i felt this strongly about this track at one point in time i really just need to swallow it and re-release it or try to get it out there again because only a small percentage of people have heard it but it's so hard and the only reason i do that is because there are songs from artists you included four five six years old that are still in my daily rotation oh, so it's like yeah. it's i know that other people have my music like that like it was something a friend of mine's like i'm still listening to this song like you are <laughs> yeah but it's like you never know what it means or how it feels to somebody so i try my best to force myself to not give up on stuff even if i've moved on from it because there's so many artists who like you could tell they're like done with that phase they're done with that time they're done with that whatever else which is our transition naturally we're gonna evolve yeah we're gonna move on sound wise but it's like these are our children these we put them out in the world we can't forget about them these are our we love them they were made in love we created yeah, them right. with love <laughs> it's so true do you have any music then like any songs of yours that are from like four or five years ago that you listen to and you're just like oh yeah this was it like i was killing it <sighs> yeah. and it took you four or five years it to be able to do that so long it has to be a gap it has to be a long break <laughs> and i'm like i made oh yeah this, yeah this is hot okay all right i'm not yeah all right 
but it's, it's, so it's a true. journey absolutely i feel that um but yeah the, this for this track i f i feel it now like i'm still hype on it granted it's not out yet it's coming out soon but i still like listen back to it i'm just like Same. man like this Same. is sick like the vibe on this is sick like i'm so glad that because even since the night that we first met i feel like we've both grown a lot yeah and so i yeah. feel like this song couldn't have happened back then because like uh, i wasn't where i am now and you weren't where you I are now where i was now either. yeah that's and so, so true it's really nice that like both that we could have like met grown parallel and like still be able to like work together after all this time because it is like it it is a good song it's a really good song look when you hit me up i was so hyped i already knew so you said there's like some rappers or some artists who you know will bring something to it i just know there are yeah. some people who want me to be on something that I already know they're gonna deliver me something quality <laughs> yeah so when you hit me i was just like yes <laughs> it's going down like a guaranteed and then as soon as i heard it there's that dissonance in the beginning of those chords that dun, 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 like of the beginning like that yeah. section right there dropped into the dancey part and I was like, <laughs> shoes, like stank face was just like yes i'm so yes. glad yes it was beautiful very and very also, well done and also even just that right at the end now i will talk about that like energy is a big thing and like you obviously musically you bring like wild energy to any track that you're on but also just as an artist as a person when, for anybody listening to this when you reach out to somebody and you're just like hey want to make music together there is a huge difference in the product you'll get if your response to that is like oh yeah sure man like hit me up sometime or like oh yo like yeah absolutely yeah. like send me something like totally the level of excitement totally. that you can transfer into another person that you're going to be working with is paramount for the type of result you're going to get and there is and, so much excitement yeah. on both sides for us and you that is why you have to stick with your tribe continue to grow continue Absolutely. to expand but the folks that you have met on your journey who you have that synergy and that vibe and you've created and or you know there's that possibility always come back to that if there's a possibility sometimes people move on of course relationships are seasons sometimes but there's i've noticed throughout my career that there have just been these people where that magic is always there that magic is just always there and even if it's like yeah. we try to collab and it doesn't happen this time it'll maybe come back around eventually it's just that that's special it's, it's noticing that energy like you said you know never forget that sometimes we try so hard to get tracks with like the bigger names and whoever else and, and get yeah. these folks who like don't know us but it's really coming up together and like you said that parallel growth it's a beautiful thing you there, you can't put a price on that you really can't you really can't well thank you so much for for first of all for making this track with me because like it it wouldn't have shined nearly as brightly without you wow. and Thank you for just also being a great example and like role model in the music industry of like what needs to be done, the level of work and 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 like tireless effort you put into this. And also for like giving me time today just to have this like cool conversation and breakdown. You're so very welcome. Thank you for having me. Let's make more music. That's Absolutely. all I have to say. Absolutely. Please more music. <laughs> Oh, I came to cut a rug, do my dance and fall in love Ain't no time for jitterbugs, no nervous energy Something simply magical